In a school, there were students sitting in their class, and two girls talked that one had heard there was a new admission in their class. They saw a new boy named Idu who had covered his face with a bandage. The teacher told everyone to get along with him. Once, Idu was reading a book by sitting on the roof of the building, and a girl came to him, asking to show her what was behind his bandage. Idu ignored her and flipped the page of the book. She tried to convince him to remove the bandage, saying not to ignore her. As she attempted to see his face, she got scared that there wasn't any face. Idu said that she saw that. Being scared, she asked what that was. Idu came closer to her, asking if she knew that the faceless ghosts were a kind of yakai, so could she keep that secret. She replied that she would but asked him not to get close to her. He then joined his hands in front of her, asking what her name was. She replied that she was Yoshi. Idu said that it was a good name and, by grabbing her hand, mentioned that he was counting on her and thanked her. The next day, Idu came to school and greeted Yoshi. Yoshi got scared, and then Idu said that he would meet her on the roof after class. She agreed with him. A boy named Tomoki came to grab Yoshi from the back and said that it seemed like she was getting chummy with Idu. Then he questioned what Idu's face looked like. Yoshi replied that she didn't see that and suggested that they shouldn't bully him. Tomoki grabbed her cheek and asked what she was saying, finding it funny and expressing that he would be looking forward to that. Idu was on the roof and Yoshi came there. He was surprised to see her there. She replied that he was the one who had called her there. Idu said that, in reality, he came to that school to get to know more about humans, so he was relying on her to teach him about humans. She replied that she wasn't good at studying at all. Idu said that there was a question with him that seemed problematic for him, and the question was, why do humans wear a uniform to go to school? And also, why do men wear a different uniform compared to girls, and wouldn't she be able to tell the difference? She thought and said that maybe it was so Idu could tell apart the students from each school, and she didn't know about guys, but girls seemed cute when they wore skirts. Idu said that so that's what cuteness means, and then he wrote that all in his notebook and thanked her for that because he learned a lot from her. And then he asked why people ride vehicles. She replied that if they walk more, they get tired. And then Idu indicated some people playing games and asked why they were running. She replied that it was because they find it fun to do that. Idu said that there were people who enjoyed burning themselves out, and there sure was a multitude of varieties of humans. She asked what he had just said. Then she ate something and said that it tasted good, and she knew getting the new flavor was the correct choice. Idu asked how that feels to eat something delicious. She answered that it was like there was a party in their mouth. Idu asked if she wanted to say that a banquet was hosted in their orifice. Yoshi asked him that he actually figured out humans, so what happened after that? Idu replied that almost all of the yakai were hiding in a different world, and they had their fun scaring humans away. At that time, the hype was over, and all that was left for them was a life of boredom. So, what Idu was doing was trying to find a way to make humans interesting again, all for the yakai community. After all, they all needed to keep up with the times and go global. He got so excited to say such, and Yoshi thought that he wasn't any dangerous at first. Then she called him and asked to let's have a picture together. He wondered about that, and Yoshi brought out her phone and clicked the photo as they turned into goblin cats in the photo. Idu was shocked and said that he wasn't able to feel his ear. She laughed at him, and then she got a call from Tomoki, saying that she had to go. As she went there, Tomoki tried to hit her, but she dodged, and he asked how much longer she was going to take and not to tell him that she was with Idu. Yoshi told him that his zipper was open, and he quickly zipped up. Yoshi told him to let's go, and she wanted to go to an arcade. Then she got on the roof and thought that Tomoki would probably hit her next time. After that, he called Idu and asked him to bring her lighter back. Idu said that fire in the other world was mostly caused by dancing out, and he found that different. Yoshi replied that she wasn't really in the mood, so could they skip the 20 questions of that day? He asked if she was sick. She replied that her boyfriend was mad at her. Idu asked if she meant a friend. She denied and said that it was her lover. Idu questioned what a lover was. Yoshi replied that it was something more than a friend, where both people love each other. He asked if she didn't mean best friends and what kind of love she was talking about. She asked if she wanted her to teach him. The bell of her phone rang, but she ignored that. Idu said that her phone was making a loud sound. She kept silent, and then she came to sit close to him, and he kept calling her, but she didn't pick up the call. Yoshi said that lovers hold hands together, as she was doing. Then she felt shy and asked him to look at her. She kissed him on the cheek and asked where to do that since he didn't have a mouth. Idu said to her that she was acting really creepy, so was there anything wrong? She got emotional and told him to rot in hell, then she ran away from there. Idu was in confusion there. Yoshi went to Tomoki, and he hit her, saying that she had to answer the phone, questioning what she was doing. And if she was with Idu, 
he would rip Aidu to shreds. Yoshi then suggested breaking up because he yelled at her and hit her when he got mad, and he was cheating on her. Tomoki approached him, being polite, and told him to calm down, asking if something so small was really enough to break them. She told Tomoki not to touch her. Tomoki was about to hit her, saying not to get too cocky, when Aidu arrived and stopped Tomoki from hitting Yoshi. Aidu said that Yoshi was his friend, so don't bully her. Yoshi cried and asked Aidu why he did that. Tomoki left her and looked towards Aidu. She told Tomoki not to do that. Aidu questioned if Tomoki wasn't her boyfriend's name. Just then, Tomoki stabbed Aidu in the stomach with a knife, leaving Yoshi shocked. Aidu asked what that was. Tomoki thought that he had just stabbed him and was puzzled by Aidu's reaction. Then he got angry at Aidu and his bandaged face, insisting on seeing Aidu's face before killing him. Aidu wondered about the meaning of kill, and then he suggested that if Tomoki wanted to see his face, he could trust him because Tomoki was Yoshi's boyfriend, and he would keep his secret. Tomoki was shocked to see that Aidu didn't have any face, and he became scared, considering him a ghost. He forcefully shut his mouth, telling him to keep his voice down as other humans might come if he screamed too loud. Then, he took out a sword and offered it to Tomoki in return. Afterward, he asked if Tomoki had passed out. Yoshi told Aidu to leave Tomoki and let's go. They overheard one girl saying to another that Tomoki was brought to a hospital, and he was really freaking out, so they decided to admit him for a while. Aidu said that he forgot that humans get really scared of his face, and he felt sorry if he scared Tomoki. Yoshi said that Tomoki would be fine, and he was the one who wanted to see that anyway. Besides, he wasn't her boyfriend anymore. Aidu asked if that was for real, and then he asked Yoshi if she could be his boyfriend. He didn't really get that back then, so he thought it would be better if he actually experienced having a lover. Other students who were sitting there were shocked and looking at them. Aidu expressed that they could be more than friends, and he was really grateful to her, so he wanted to know more about her. She felt embarrassed and asked what he was saying. Aidu said that didn't she hear him, he wanted her to be his boyfriend. And could he hold her hand? She replied, telling him not to get carried away. He asked her why she was getting mad at him. He grabbed her cheeks, and all the other people were looking at them. He then touched her eyes, nose, and cheek. Yoshi said that it tickled her. He asked for a little more, and those lips were soft. She told him to just shut up. A boy asked them what they were doing, and another boy suggested that they both get in a room. Aidu said to Yoshi that he understood, and he draw his eyes, nose and mouth and leaned towards her for a kiss. She scratched his face and denied doing that, saying that there was no kissing in public. Other boys wondered what they were doing. Then they both went to the roof, and their Aidu said that he didn't get that. She asked what he was talking about, and he replied that when she talked about the display of affection, what was the meaning of that? and he kind of understood that it was similar to love. Aidu said that it was only about feelings, like how they got butterflies in their stomachs when they were together or how he felt safe, and at ease when he was with them. She reminded him of the time when Aidu had told Tomoki to stop bullying her because she was his friend. Aidu got close to her and asked how butterflies get in her stomach, as she had said. She replied that it was only an expression for when their chests start beating fast. Aidu moved his hand towards her chest, asking if her heart was located around there. She moved his hands away from there and asked what he was thinking of doing. Aidu, confused, asked her if that was a bad touch. She replied that it was a human thing. Aidu moved at some distance, knelt in front of her, and thanked her. Then they went to the class, and she was sleeping there. Aidu poked her to wake her up, and he gave a letter to her. She wondered about it, and it was written that Aidu had read about lovers passing notes in class, so he tried to write that to her. She then passed a note to him, and it was written that she was sleepy. Aidu thought that humans needed sleep daily, and the productive time in their cycle must be limited. She then yawned, and Aidu started writing something again. She just put her head down, and he was still writing the letter. She gave him a note, asking where the next note was. He thought she was sleepy, and he just gave the note. He asked what she meant by making out. The teacher announced that the class for that day was over. Yoshi shouted at him, asking what he was asking her. Aidu showed the book and said that it was written there. She felt embarrassed and said that he wasn't at such a level yet. Aidu questioned the level and asked if she meant a certain degree of proficiency was required to reach the next level in a relationship. She asked what the proficiency was. He replied that it pertained to the skills they improved through attending class. Yoshi wondered what he was talking about, and then she said that being in a relationship wasn't like attending class. He brought up the topic of making out again, but she stopped him and said that it was a human thing. He mentioned it again, but she replied asking how she could make him shut up and where his mouth was. Then she told him to stop yelling those words. All the other students were staring at them. Yoshi told Aidu that she was leaving. Aidu asked about the homeroom, and she replied that it wasn't important. 
Then Aidu called out to her. She asked what happened. He grabbed her hands, and she felt shy, asking what that was. He showed her a book and said that lovers walk hand in hand like that. She got angry, but then she calmed down and said that she guessed it wasn't bad. She reminisced about her time with Tomoki, and Tomoki told Yoshi that what if they were dating and to spare him that clingy nonsense. Tomoki told her that he already told her they were talking, and he wasn't cheating on her. She replied that he was holding the hand of the other girl. Tomoki said that Yoshi called that a petty little thing cheating and couldn't she trust him, so just break up and quit her nagging already. Yoshi apologized to Aidu and said that she lied and she had always wanted to do that. He replied that it was good to hear. Then she let go of his hand and went to do something in her locker. After doing that, she grabbed his hand again. Aidu thought that her grip was much firmer than earlier, and her hand was much warmer. He then asked her if she was happy. She replied to shut up, and she felt shy. Aidu thought that transmitting emotions like that must be a form of telepathy. Then he said that holding hands was really fun. She became happy, and he got confused, thinking that he felt all warm inside. Humans were so strange and full of mysteries, and there was still a lot for him to learn about. Then they kept walking by holding hands. She thought that she was a human and Aidu is a yakai, and they were dating. She wondered when they would ever spend some quality time together if all he did around her was bury his head in books. Aidu closed the book there and noticed that she was chewing gum. She called him, but ignoring her, he opened the book again. She wondered if they were really dating and then asked him why he kept reading a lot of books. He replied that it was because he wanted to learn a lot. She thought that he could always ask her since they were dating after all. Then she reminisced about everything and asked if they were really dating, but it wasn't like he understood what that really meant. But wait, what did that mean for? Two girls, by looking at them, whispered that it was only a few days since Aidu's confession. The second girl said that it looked like his relationship with Yoshi was in trouble. Frustrated, Yoshi was looking at him, and he kept reading the book. Other girls, by looking at them, thought that Aidu should just watch that Yoshi wanted his attention. Aidu asked her if she could teach him that part. She replied in a loud voice that he was hopeless without her. Then she started teaching him. Those girls thought that Yoshi gave in way too fast. After a while, he thanked her for that and then started reading again. She thought about why she was so quick to forgive him and why everyone walked all over her, and she had had enough. She decided to keep ignoring him until he noticed. She said that it was so much to do. Aidu mentioned that the human body was filled with many of those organs, and didn't they feel heavy? Then he called her, but she was sitting turned around and didn't listen to him. Three hours passed, Yoshi was crying, but he didn't look at her and kept reading. And then he saw that Yoshi left from there. Some girls came behind Aidu. Aidu wondered if she might have gone to the washroom. The girl behind him shouted at him, saying that she couldn't stand to watch that anymore. The second girl said that it was obvious Yoshi was sulking, and how could he not get that? Aidu wondered about sulking and questioned if that meant she was angry, but why? All the girls told him to just come on. Some boys came there, and one said that he thought Aidu should apologize to Yoshi first. The girl said to stop, for they honestly thought they could solve everything just by apologizing. The boy told the girl to quit her nagging, and he didn't even say that. Aidu walked out of the class and said that, in short, he did something wrong. He went to the roof and found Yoshi lying there. By calling her, he approached her, but she didn't reply. He asked if she was angry at him and apologized to her, saying that he didn't notice. She thought that she already felt like forgiving him, and all he did was come near her. She wondered if she should sulk more, but he actually noticed that she was mad at him, so wasn't that good enough. But not by a long shot, and she didn't think she could hold that any longer. Aidu said that he knew that when their girlfriend gets mad at them, they better had to give them some space. She thought to throw that stupid magazine away already. She then stood up and said that he was an idiot and she wasn't mad at something like that. As she was going from there, he called her to wait and said that he wanted to make up with her properly. Then she hugged him and said that if it was something he did, he apologized, but just tell him what was wrong. She got mad over some foolish things, and it wasn't his fault. He asked why she was mad. She seemed embarrassed and said that he only busy reading books and doesn't talk to her. She felt a bit lonely, and that was all, so she apologized for sulking. Aidu suggested doing the ritual of reconciliation. She asked for an explanation. He replied that it was the yakai tradition where they give each other something important to them. She asked what he was giving her. He gave her a slip, so she questioned what that was. Aidu replied that it was his ticket to get back to his world, and he wasn't able to go there without that. She said that it was so important for him. He asked if she didn't want that. She replied that he should hold on to that and make sure not to lose it, and besides, why did he want to make up? He replied that he was her boyfriend and also wouldn't know what to do if she weren't around to teach him more things. She thought that he was actually aware that he was her boyfriend. 
Then she said that he shouldn't give away his precious ticket over something like that. He replied that he was just panicked, and earlier when he tried to talk to her, she kept ignoring him, and he really felt sad there. And that's why if they didn't properly reconcile at that time, he was sure that they would keep on carrying those feelings of sadness, and he didn't want that. She thought that it was the first time anyone had ever told her that, and then she suggested having a handshake and making up. They did so, and heading downstairs, Idu mentioned that humans from their class talked to him earlier, wondering if it would be alright if they knew his real identity. She asked if that wasn't too early to say. He said that he guessed so, and his landlord told him not to. She wondered about the landlord. He replied that the landlord was in charge of the share house he was living in at that time and asked if she wanted to come to his place. She thought about that and asked if he was sure about that. He replied that it would be because they were dating. She wondered about that, and he asked if they weren't. She just hugged him and said that they were dating. By pulling back, she mentioned that her hair was all messed up, so he should fix that for her. They sat on the stairs, and he asked if he could do that by his hand. She agreed. They both started their walk to Idu's home, and he suggested she match her steps with his. She supposed that his share house, located in the middle of the forest, would be a great villa. He asked if there was something different about her that day. She asked if he liked that, and he denied it. She told him to just praise her, and he replied that he knew, and she became talkative. She replied that it wasn't like that. Idu mentioned that she was in pretty high spirits that day, and she said that it wasn't really. They arrived at their place, and she complimented that it was a nice place. There she saw a dog house and asked if they had a pet dog. Just an elephant cake was outside that small house, and she exclaimed that it was a freaking elephant. Idu said that it was Balu, the dream eater. Then he opened the door and saw some other people there, telling them that he just met Yoshi, his girlfriend, about whom he had told them the last day. They all greeted Yoshi. Then Idu told Yoshi to just follow him upstairs. All the people were staring at Yoshi. They came in front of a room, and Idu said that it was his room. Then she entered there and noticed that it was so retro. As she looked outside the window, she said that it was already evening. Idu mentioned that he liked evenings, so he set his window to the evening. She exclaimed that could he do such high-tech things. That was amazing, and she didn't know he was such a romantic, and it was so cool. Idu replied that he was glad she liked that. She then told him to allow her to go and make some tea. Idu replied that he would do that, so she just sat and relaxed. She asked if he was sure about that, and he agreed, saying that he was the one who invited her there. She then sat there and thought that all her other ex-boyfriends always made her do that. She then looked around the room, and just as he brought the tea, having that, she thanked him. Idu stared at her and thought that she just liked that tea. She thought about what they were going to do after that. And since it was Idu they were talking about, he probably went for studying. And then they really went for reading, and he grabbed her hands and said that he wanted to teach her more about himself. Or was that something she couldn't teach him because he was a yakai? She replied that, in reality, she didn't mind that anymore. He said that it was good, and then he got to do something. But she just thought about what if that would happen. And then she apologized to him and said that she wanted to go to the washroom for a while. Itty thought of any extra washroom and got that there should be one on the first floor. She thought about what was wrong with her and that it wasn't her first date or anything else, so she thought to calm down. As she got to the washroom, she thought that she must be going crazy and Idu was a nice guy. No one had ever treated her like that before. And he was a yakai, so he didn't really know what he was doing. And that was the only reason why he would be nice to her. She then reminded herself of those things and thought that she actually liked him. She heard someone calling for the red paper or blue paper. She wondered who was talking and if they were talking about the tissue paper. Then she came out, feeling like someone called her lame while she was inside. As she emerged, she saw all those people staring at her. Shocked, she asked, what was that? They said that she was always faceless, getting the good stuff, and they wanted to play with humans. Idu told a child not to say that, and Yoshi didn't come there to play with her. All of this seemed weird, and she asked Yoshi to play with them. She seemed scared, and Idu told everyone to stop. As he hugged Yoshi, he told them that the landlord had warned them to be careful not to bother humans and scare them away. The girl said that they were only asking to play with them. Idu apologized and told Yoshi that all those yakai were very curious to know about humans. He reassured her that they were all good, and was she scared? She replied that if he was there with her, she wasn't scared at all. Then Idu said to all that she was ready to play with them as long as Faceless was with her. They all got very excited to hear that. They started to play hide and seek, and a boy started counting. Idu and Yoshi hid in a pot, and she told Yoshi that she last played that when she was in elementary school. He said that it was a fun game. Yoshi thought that the position in which they were sitting was bad. 
Aidu said that he could feel something moving, something rapidly there, so he asked if that was her heart. It was beating very fast. She replied that it was fine, her heart was beating like crazy, but what about his heart? She placed her ear on his chest to listen, but she didn't hear anything. He replied that it was because he didn't have any heart, but he did have a soul. She questioned whether a soul gets nervous too. She added, why did you want to introduce me to your yakai friends? Aidu replied that she was the only human who knew his real identity, and she had been very kind to him. Besides, she was currently his girlfriend, so she was special. She felt embarrassed to think about that. Aidu said that he knew so much more about humans because of her, and along the way, he had started feeling like he wanted her to know more about him too. She asked if that was so, and she did want to know more about him. He replied that it was good to hear. She got close to him and asked if he didn't dare to call her creepy. As she kissed him, the boy opened the top of the pot and said that he found them. Seeing them in such a position, he asked what they were doing. Yoshi, being confused, replied that it was nothing. Then they both came outside of the pot, and he asked Yoshi what happened. The boy found them, so let's go. Disappointed, Yoshi wondered why she was always like that. After playing the games, Yoshi and Aidu came outside, and by waving to everyone, Yoshi said goodbye and suggested meeting again soon. Then she told Aidu that she really had fun and wanted to come back there sometime. He exclaimed that it was great. They started going from there. As they came out of the forest, Yoshi said that she would be fine going home from there and then looked at him. Aidu kissed her and said that he thought she wanted that back when they were in the pot, was he wrong about that? She replied that he wasn't. Then he suggested meeting at school the next day. She left, thinking that he might not have understood the impact of what he had done with her, and being romantic with a yakai was more complicated than she thought it would be. Aidu came home, and a man said to Aidu that he felt sorry for Yoshi. Then they all played hide and seek again. Aidu wondered about what the man meant by feeling sorry for Yoshi. The next day, as Yoshi got to school, she saw that Aidu was walking there. She got excited and ran to grab his hand, asking how he was. Aidu still wondered about what that boy felt sorry for Yoshi thinking that something bad had happened to her. He felt so embarrassed that all people were looking at them, so he removed her hand and put a note to clear the situation. He said that it should fix things, so let's get to class. She was in shock to see that, and while walking in the corridor, she asked what that was about. He stopped there, and she was struck with him. They saw the same boy who had said to Aidu that he felt sorry for Yoshi, Inari. Inari greeted her and asked if she remembered him. They had met the previous day at the share house. She reminded him and asked why he was in their classroom. Inari told her his name and said that he was studying humanities, like the faceless. Another boy called to Inari and told him to check that. Yoshi wondered about that. Inari said that it was his real name and just like how Faceless had its Aidu. And then he said, let's meet later. They saw in the book that the character was the main one from that shounen manga, a certain soccer friend. And one boy said that it was so cool, so just do that again. Inari replied that it was just a look. He was so smooth and too dreamy. Inari helped a girl carry some papers, stating that it might be heavy. Aidu and Yoshi got to the roof. Yoshi said that Inari was flirting a lot, and wasn't he supposed to be a transfer student or something? Aidu said that Inari could cast the illusion that he was part of the class on everyone. And that morning, Aidu cleared Yoshi from that illusion. Yoshi said that it was amazing, so if they put teachers under the illusion that they were studying, she didn't have to attend the class at all. Aidu asked her if she didn't come to school to learn something. Just then, Inari came and asked if they were talking about him. Then he saw the food and said that the tofu seemed so good and mentioned that he forgot to bring his lunch box on that day. She then asked him if he wanted that. He asked if that was for real, and then she proceeded to feed him. He grabbed her and took a bite of tofu, thanking her. He commented that it was much appreciated. Yoshi thought that Inari was like Aidu but with no sense of personal space. She then saw Aidu, who seemed confused. Yoshi thought as if he knew what jealousy was. And while having the noodles, she thought of her ex getting jealous of everyone, so she wasn't really able to talk to her classmates. Would she be able to talk to them normally after that, and would she be able to make more friends? Aidu called her, asking what was wrong. She came closer to him and said that it was nothing, thinking that the reason she could even consider that was all thanks to Aidu only. After school was over, Yoshi was standing, and as two girls passed by, Yoshi suggested meeting next day. They both fell silent for a while. Yoshi wondered if she had been overly friendly with them. Inari came and said, let's meet next day, Yoshi. Then both girls said goodbye to Yoshi, seeming in a hurry, and also said goodbye to Inari. Those girls seemed happy to talk to Yoshi normally. Inari stood next to Yoshi and asked if she wanted to walk home together. She denied and said that she was waiting for Aidu who had the cleaning duty for that day. He suggested talking for a while. Yoshi asked him to tell her more about Aidu. 
Inari said that Aidu was really quite a sincere one, though he was stubborn, and the landlord was really against him enrolling there. But he convinced the landlord with pure willpower. She replied that she could see that. Inari asked if she was interested in that. She agreed and asked him to tell her more. Inari asked if that was because Aidu was a yakai. She said that surely there were a lot of things she didn't know about him because he was a yakai. But even without that, she wanted to know more and more about him. That's why she wanted to hear more about Aidu from Inari. Inari agreed to tell but gave a condition to only tell him about humans as she taught Aidu. She agreed with that, and just then, Aidu arrived by calling her. She got happy to see him and ran towards him. Inari commented that Yoshi was so cute, and her face sparkled whenever she saw Aidu. Aidu said that he loved that expression on her face, and she was really a cute girl. She got shy upon hearing that. After that, Aidu and Inari went to their home, and Yoshi went to hers. A fox was in Aidu's room and asked if she could stir up in his relationship. Aidu wondered about stirring up. She explained that it means to play around with them both. Aidu replied that it seemed nice, so go ahead. The fox said that she was sure it would be fun. On the other side, Yoshi felt cold while she was bathing. Next day, Aidu and Yoshi were sitting on the roof of the school building. Aidu said that he loved her such face, and she was really cute. She asked him what other things he considered as cute. He replied that he liked frogs, lizards, and spiders. She felt conflicted to hear that. Aidu thought that those cute little things make them want to protect them. Yoshi thought that she was all gruff that Aidu called her cute, and she considered herself as an idiot. In the classroom, Aidu stared at her and thought that she was emanating a red color that day. Was she mad about anything? Maybe because he ruined her rice balls. Inari came and asked her what was wrong as she had quite a displeased look on her face. She replied that it was nothing. Aidu thought about the displeased look on her face and then asked if that was how a displeased look is like. She got surprised to hear that. Inari said to him that just as he knows, humans express their emotions using their faces. Aidu said that so that's the reason everyone had a face. Inari came close to Yoshi and said that being Aidu's girlfriend could only mean a lot of trouble for her in the future, and if she needed someone to talk to, Inari would be right there. She thought that she had forgotten that Inari was sitting next to her. Inari grabbed his hand, thinking that she had to teach him about personal space first. Aidu thought that Inari was giving off the pitch black color, as always. After a while, Yoshi and Aidu sat next to each other, and Aidu kept moving the home screen of the phone numerous times. She thought that Aidu got into his little world again. She then grabbed his hand, and he asked what that was. She replied that it was nothing. Aidu thought that she had that sparkly color again, and even the corners of her mouth lifted up like that, she sparkled a lot. She wondered what he was thinking about her and if he understood how she felt about him. Aidu got up from his room and, lying down, thought about how Toshi could emit that kind of color and what that color meant. It was a sparkle that he had never seen on anyone else, and he felt like Yoshi sparkled whenever she talked to him, which was incredibly beautiful. It made him feel like he was the special one for Yoshi, and that made him happy to know. The next day, when Yoshi was at school, Inari came and called her, asking if she was waiting for Aidu. She asked him if she could inquire about something, and he sat next to her, saying that Aidu didn't have a clear expression in the first place, so he might not be aware that emotions were expressed on the surface like that. It might be difficult for Aidu to express his own feelings. Then, Inari asked what if she dated Inari. If he were in Aidu's place, he wouldn't let her feel insecure like that and would express his feelings for her. She denied that and stated that she loved Aidu. Aidu came from behind and saw that she was talking to Inari. Inari said to Yoshi that Aidu was making her feel insecure, so was she okay with that? She replied that Aidu saved her. He was a nice person and always saved her whenever she got scared. Aidu actually listened to her, relied on her, and it was surprisingly easy to think of reasons why. He gave her what she wanted, things she thought she would never get. Aidu was sincere, honest, and had a cute side to him. He always gave his all in anything he did for her, so that made her think that it was fine for her to fall deeper and deeper in love with him. Her only worry was about his expression on the first. She felt she had to do her best to give her shot like him. Aidu got angry and wondered why she was sparkling for Inari. He thought of telling Inari not to touch her, so he lifted her and told Inari to stay away. All the students looked at them. Yoshi became embarrassed and asked Aidu what he was doing. He replied that he didn't like it when she talked to others with that sparkling expression. Inari suggested calming down and pointed out that Aidu was bothering Yoshi. Yoshi asked Aidu to put her down since there were a lot of people around. Aidu replied that he didn't want to. He continued walking, still carrying her, and asked what she was talking about with Inari. She replied that they were only talking about Aidu. Aidu questioned if she was sparkling because she was talking about him and asked what they were talking about. 
She replied that it was about what she should do to let him know how she feels. Aidu wondered what she felt. Yoshi felt embarrassed with people nearby and asked if they could go to a different place and for him to put her down. Aidu asked why and if she didn't like it, and told her to just tell him how she felt. She replied that she loved him. Aidu said that so the sparkle meant she loved him that much. She asked him to keep his voice down. Aidu replied that he loved her too. Yoshi became emotional and accused him of just fooling her, thinking he was going to say that was how he felt about frogs, lizards, and spiders. He reassured her that he didn't love frogs or lizards or spiders as much as he loved her. She asked if she was special, and he replied that he couldn't think of anyone or anything else as special as her. Someone congratulated them, wishing them happiness, and they all applauded for them. Yoshi felt embarrassed by this and suggested they leave. Meanwhile, Inari was putting something in Yoshi's locker and commented that it was the first time he had seen Aidu and Yoshi like that, wondering how much she loved Aidu and finding it interesting. Aidu and Yoshi were sitting on the grass by the river, and Aidu remarked that he had only ever seen the color around her. Yoshi asked what he was talking about, and he explained that he meant the color of emotions. She asked which emotion she was emitting at that time and he replied that it was pink, so he asked which emotion that was. She replied that he had it all wrong and it sounded like he was saying something perverted. One morning, Yoshi wakes up before her alarm rings. She remembers that it's Aidu's birthday and feels so happy. Someone calls her and tells her that she will be late for school. She gets shocked to hear that. Then, she goes outside the house and meets Aidu there. Aidu tells her that it's where they always part ways on their way home from school, so he thought he would see her if he waited there. She blushes and says that he is so cute. Aidu says that they will be late for school at that rate. She apologizes and then they head to school. Two girls approach Yoshi and greet her. She asks them what's going on. They reply that Aidu carried Yoshi in his arms the previous day, and they want to hear all the details. Yoshi asks them how they know that. They show her a picture and say that a friend from their class sent it to them. Aidu was very famous after all. Yoshi is surprised to see that. Aidu shows her something he made with his own hands. A boy asks Aidu how he became so close to Yoshi. The second one asks what started it all. Aidu begins to explain that Yoshi saw him, and then he realizes that they didn't know that Aidu didn't have a face. He continues, saying that Yoshi saw the secret part of him, and she taught him a lot of things and kissed him. All the students get excited to hear that. Yoshi tells him that it's giving them a bad idea and misleading them. Inari comes and says that Yoshi is so cute when she gets mad and flustered, and he laughs. Yoshi tells him that it's not something to laugh about. Aidu is busy on his phone, and it tells him to turn right at the next corner. He agrees and thanks it. Then, he tells Yoshi that the phone is saying that the store is around there. She replies to Aidu that a phone isn't a human, so he doesn't have to thank it. Aidu says that when they use something for a long time, a spirit eventually dwells in it. She asks if that was for real and if she had heard for about a year, and he thinks that it had a spirit. She apologizes to him and says that she keeps dropping him and stuff. Inari tells her to calm down and says that a year is not nearly long enough for that to get a spirit. Yoshi says that it's good to hear. Then she sees the statue and questions if shrine foxes are not considered yakai. Inari replies that shrine foxes are messengers of God and they could call them as Zenko, and yakai like Yako were completely different. Yoshi wonders about Zenko and Yako. Inari replies that foxes who bring good fortune are called Zenko, and Yako are foxes who bring calamity, and that is generally what they call those foxes that don't fall under Zenko. Yoshi asks if Yako could ever become Zenko. Inari replies that for that they have to pass a test and says that Tent decided who becomes Zenko based on the color of their fur, and as for them, their fur is different, but that is a mixed case, so they couldn't possibly become a messenger of God. And that was only an excuse, as long as they could take the test, they had a chance, so cease thy training. The color of one's fur betrays the truth of its owner, and a fox as sullied as thyself could never dream of being chosen as a messenger of God. That was a very strict test, and even he didn't feel like taking it, so he suggests that they should go. Aidu thinks of the strange gray color coming from Inari. Then they get to a restaurant, and Yoshi says that she had heard about that place on the net and saw that it had a branch nearby, so she really wanted to stop by. Inari asks if that was so, but the taste of the thing they were eating was good. Yoshi tells him that she was glad he also came with them, and they could see that Aidu couldn't eat. Wasn't it way more fun when they could compare tastes after eating together? Aidu says that he could ingest that, technically speaking. Yoshi shouts at him that he told her before that he couldn't eat, and if she had known, she would have made him lunch or something else. And then she said, let's try that, and then she moved a piece of that food towards Aidu, and just then it passed from that bandage. Aidu said that he wouldn't call that eating per se. 
Inari just hid that so others couldn't see that, and then he suggested to Aidu to not do such in public. Aidu said that it was sweet, but he just wanted to make Yoshi happy. Inari said to him to just look at Yoshi and did she really seem happy. She replied that she almost had a heart attack. Aidu apologized and said that the landlord told him not to do that, but he thought it would be fine if he showed her. She said that the shock factor was off the charts. Inari thinks that it was why the relationship could never work out, and a bit of their human skin and that was what happened. And even if a human and a yakai say they love each other, those feelings were only superficial, and they couldn't go any further than that. He knew that from the start, Yoshi was probably thinking that she wouldn't be able to accept any more of Aidu, and that feeling would soon turn into hate. Yoshi said that it wasn't okay for her, so she didn't plan on getting used to that. Aidu asked Inari if she hated him at that time. Inari replied that he didn't know. Yoshi said not to get that wrong. And even if they loved someone, there were just some things they couldn't accept about them. And wasn't that normal? And that didn't mean that she hated him. Aidu said that so that was normal. And how that she mentioned that he didn't like her perfume. She got shocked and said to just tell her earlier. And she would have changed her perfume or stopped using one. Aidu replied that it wasn't that the smell was too strong or anything. And he was just handy he could tell her real smell because of that. He grabbed her and said that he wanted to know how she smelled. Yoshi told him to stop that because that was perverted. He asked why. Inari thought that they should just get to a room. Then Yoshi saw a girl in glasses who was standing and staring at them. Yoshi thought that she was sure that the girl was from her class but she wondered about her name. And then she asked the girl if she needed anything. The girl got shocked and apologized to Yoshi. Yoshi wondered why the girl apologized. And then Inari looked at the girl and said goodbye to her, Nuki. And Nuki left from there. Yoshi said that so it was like that. Aidu questioned what that was. At Aidu's house, the landlord wonders about the winter break. Aidu said that it was starting from the next day. The landlord said that so it was already winter. Aidu said that he didn't know that humans needed to hibernate. The landlord said to him that he was going out of town for a few days, so he had to take care of Yuyuan. Aidu asked Yuyuan if she was lonely too, so they needed to do something fun and what did she want. Yuyuan replied that she wanted a Christmas party. Aidu then went to Yoshi and asked if they would be having a Christmas party at home. So did Yoshi want to come. She got excited and agreed to come. She thought that she forgot that his house was filled with yakai. Some other students wondered about the Christmas party at Aidu's house. One boy said that he always wanted to see where Aidu was living. A girl said to just set the mood and those two probably wanted to be alone for Christmas. Aidu said that they would be having a party with everyone at the share house where he was staying. So he thought they would be really happy to see lots of people there. Yoshi asked him if his landlord would get mad if he did so. Aidu replied that there wouldn't be any problem because his landlord was out of town for a few days. Inari said that was all the more reason to. Just then, two girls came to him, and one said that they wanted to see Aidu in Inari's room. Another one asked Inari if he lived there too. Inari said, let's go. Yoshi said that it would be her first time spending Christmas with lots of people. Aidu commented that it was his first time as well. Yoshi thought that it seemed like Aidu was looking forward to that, but she wanted to spend Christmas alone with him. After all, it was a special day, and she would be excited if there were only the two of them. Aidu commented on her, saying that she was giving off that bright pink color. She shouted at him not to look. The scene shifted to December 24th, and all the students came to Aidu's house. They all saw a mountain cabin and commented that it seemed like a ski lodge. One of them wondered how it got snow. Another one replied that it was artificial decoration. Yoshi said that she was pretty sure it looked different from last time. Aidu said that they had used a snowy mountain theme that time. One commented on how versatile that was. Yoshi asked Inari if he was sure it was fine to bring everyone along. Inari replied that most of the yakai who lived there were humanoid, so it should be fine. As the students opened the door, all the yakai greeted them Merry Christmas. The students looked around and saw that the room was decorated very prettily, and they all exclaimed in delight. Yoshi commented that it really seemed like Christmas. Aidu said that he patterned the decor off some reference books he picked up. Then, one-eyed yakai said to a boy to let him hold his jacket. Yoshi said that some of them were kind of confused with Halloween. Yoshi seemed scared, so she grabbed Aidu's hand. Aidu revealed that it was the real form of the yakai. She said that he said that it wouldn't be a big deal. A boy said to two girls that the guests were welcome to sit at the kotatsu. One girl said to the other one that the boy was very handsome. Just then, the boy came and said to let him squeeze in. Both girls felt shy and the second one asked the student sitting next to her to move a bit. The boy said that there was no need because there was lots of space. All of them sat there to have drinks together and have fun. 
Hinari thought that he forgot that he had everyone's thing going on, and then they all looked at each other. One wondered if the Kotatsu was bigger earlier, and one questioned if it was just him or did that pot get bigger. A yakai thanked all of them for coming there and said that he was the hot pot magistrate, and just allow him to show them the ultimate hot pot. And in the spirit of Christmas, he had planned to serve a taste of the seven-faced chicken. But unfortunately, he was unable to procure one. Inari thought if that was going to be fine. The man said to behold, the eight-faced dragon, and then some heads of the dragon came outside of it. A boy said that they put so much work into the show. Yoshi asked Aidu if that was still allowed. He replied that it could pass as a snake. The girl said to Inari that the share house was awesome. Another one asked Inari if he was dating Yoshi. He meant that Yoshi had dated a lot of boys, and he wouldn't be surprised if she was dating both Inari and Aidu at the same time. Just then, the boy got shocked because Inari was staring at him. And then Inari said that Yoshi wasn't as easy as they think she was. Aidu asked Yuyun if she was having fun. Yoshi asked Yuyun if she remembered her. Yuyun replied that Yoshi was the girl who tried to kiss Aidu. Yoshi was shocked to hear that. Aidu replied to Yoshi that he told Yuyun because she was asking what they were doing. So he told her everything. Yuyun then asked Yoshi if she would come there again. Aidu said to Yoshi that Yuyun's father was out, so he was a bit lonely. Yoshi then hugged him and agreed to come again and then she suggested playing hide and seek. Aidu just stared at her, and she questioned what that was. He replied that it was nothing. A pet was in between those two girls and said that beer was the best. Those two wondered if that was a pet, and one said that she would pet him just a little. After that, they all had fun. Yoshi saw that Yuyun fell asleep fast, and then she said to Aidu that she wanted to be alone with him for a while if he was fine with that. He then suggested going to his room, and they agreed. As she came close to the stairs, Nuki came up to her. She asked what happened. Nuki said that Inari told her that he was getting tired, so he went to his room, and she was a bit worried. Yoshi said to Aidu to just show her the way to Inari's room. Aidu thought that she was sparkling. Nuki said that she would bother Inari if she went there. Then Yoshi asked Nuki if she loved Inari. Nuki tried to deny it. As they talked, they reached Inari's room. They saw the fox there who was changing clothes. Aidu just fell out there. Yoshi asked him if he was fine. He replied that his body was feeling heavy. As the fox called Aidu, Nuki realized that it was the voice of Inari. The fox was Inari, and then he said that it was only the costume he was wearing and that it seemed real. Nuki said to him that he looked so cool. Inari replied that his fur was pretty impressive. Yoshi just asked Aidu if she could touch it. Inari called Yoshi, but Yoshi asked Nuki if it was so soft, so could she try it. Inari got shocked and asked them to wait for a while. Nuki touched his paws and said that it was so squishy. Yoshi said that it was like a big fluffy pillow. Just then, Inari threw them out of the room. Yoshi wondered if Inari was mad, and she laughed about it. Nuki apologized to Inari for that. Aidu commented that maybe Inari was shy. Nuki said that she would go back downstairs. As she came down, she thought that Inari probably liked Yoshi and she was not as easy as they thought she was. Aidu said to Yoshi to let's go to his room. She agreed and thought that if he wasn't faceless, what kind of face would he make when he said that? She couldn't imagine the face of someone without any ulterior motives. Then Aidu grabbed her hand and started walking to his room. As they entered, Yoshi felt cold there. Aidu called and said that he wanted to hug her as she did with Yuyuan. She asked the reason for that. He replied that it was because she was hibernating doom and the fact that the school had the winter break, so that meant humans needed to hibernate. Yoshi laughed and asked if he would be lonely without her. He replied that he would. She then hid her face and said that so it was fine. He asked her if she was okay. He then hugged her, and she said that as he mentioned that, she thought she was getting a little sleepy, and she asked to hug him tight so he wouldn't get lonely. Aidu did so, and Yoshi thought that Aidu had an aggressive side to him sometimes. Aidu said that it wasn't forever, and if she just became a yakai, then that would be. Yoshi apologized to him because she realized that she was not sleepy, and humans didn't hibernate. Aidu thanked God for that. She wondered if something happened. After some time, the party ended, and all the students were leaving. The little yakai said to them to come back there again. Inari said to him that it was only for that day. The small boy considered Inari as selfish. Inari said that he wasn't being selfish, and they needed to maintain the boundary between their worlds. A man asked Inari if he wouldn't stop Yoshi and Aidu. Inari replied that it wouldn't amount to anything more than a fun pastime, and he would just okay with them a bit, and that should be enough. Outside the house, Aidu said to Yoshi that he would be able to see her the next day and then by hugging him, she suggested going on a date. He questioned what that was. Next morning, Yoshi was getting ready and using a different scent. She remembered Aidu's words and then said that it means everything scented was out of the question and she needed to throw those things away. 
Aida was sitting in a place, still waiting for Yoshi to arrive. He stood up and wondered what if she hibernated that time. She then came and replied that she wasn't. Aidu felt relieved and as he looked at her, he said that she looked a bit grey that day, was she feeling sick? She replied that she didn't know what he liked, so she didn't know what to wear or what makeup to use, and she wanted to make him happy by wearing clothes like that. He asked what did his preferences have anything to do with that. Just being able to see her that day made him happy, and he supposed that meant she wanted to make him even happier than that. He got close to her and said that he was happy to hear that, so he thanked her. She replied that it was nothing, and then he asked Yoshi where they were going for the date. She replied that they were going a bit further out, and then they arrived at the Dreaming Zoo. There they fed giraffes, and Yoshi considered that very cool. Aidu said that he never knew animals with such long necks existed, and that was very amazing. Yoshi asked if he had never seen a giraffe before. Then they saw another animal, and Aidu asked what that dog was. She replied that it wasn't a dog. Aidu was surprised to see a bird there. Again, she replied that it wasn't the bird. Aidu said that there were lots of animals that he had never seen before, and that was so fun. Yoshi said that it looks like bringing him there was a good idea. Just then, they saw a fox, and Aidu said that foxes were the primitive form of Inari, and all yakai that had animals as their primitive form used to be normal animals. Yoshi said that if that fox wanted to become a yakai, he could. Aidu said to the fox that if they were going to become a yakai, they should come to their share house. And then they went to see the bunnies, and Yoshi said that they were so cute as she took one in her hand. She then called to Aidu, but he didn't reply. She just heard him screaming, and he shouted that the animal was eating his bandage. She then stopped that, and they both sat in a corner. Aidu said that those animals were scary. Yoshi said to him that he was a yakai, and that was rich coming from him. Aidu said to first let him fix the bandage, so he took off the whole bandage. She looked at him and thought that the face without a face seemed creepy, but she just had to take that as a challenge. And as he was covering his head, she saw his ears and also noticed that he was wearing earrings. He replied that he forgot to tell her about that. She said that he was quite the fashionista. She then touched the earrings. He replied that it tickled, and she said that she was touching him below the bandage. He thought that he didn't know, but for some reason, Yoshi's touch felt hot, and she was giving off some very different colors, since he couldn't tell how she felt at that time. Then they got on the train, and Aidu said that a lot of things had changed since his time. Yoshi wondered about his time and asked if he meant when he came to the human world. Aidu replied that it was around the Edo period. She was shocked to hear that Aidu was talking about thousands of years back. Aidu said that he didn't think that was a long time. Yoshi commented that Aidu had lived a very long time there. Aidu agreed and said that it was because he was a yakai. She thought of something and said that she knew, and since his ears were pierced and all, they should get some matching earrings. They went to such a shop, and Aidu questioned if having matching earrings meant something. Yoshi said that it was the same as holding hands. Aidu wondered about holding hands, and then she picked one. After buying that, they came outside and sat on a bench. Yoshi then changed the earrings on his ears and said that it was great that he had that hidden under her bandage. And then she showed that she put on herself too, and that was like their little secret. Aidu looked at her and felt hot. Yoshi asked him if he was okay, as he had seemed down since the train ride back. Aidu asked her how did she know, and he didn't have a face, so it's not like she could see colors like he could. Yoshi agreed and said that she just felt like she could sense his mood or something. Aidu exclaimed that she was very amazing. Yoshi replied that it wasn't because she was amazing. He praised her a lot, but she wasn't a great human. She thought that she knew she told before that even if he loved someone, there were some things they couldn't accept about them, but she couldn't even bring herself to touch anything other than Aidu's ears, which came as a bit of a shock to her. The reason she even brought up buying new earrings was so she could change the topic. Again Aidu exclaimed that she was so amazing, and he once had a human friend who died, and that all happened so fast, and that friend of his grew bigger, and then smaller, and after that, died. Yoshi questioned if that person got sick. Aidu denied and said that their lifespan ran out. Since Aidu had that, it would always keep them connected in the future, and Yoshi was amazing for coming up with that. Yoshi thought that she didn't really come up with anything that grand in mind. Aidu grabbed her hand and thanked her. Yoshi just hugged him and thought that she wanted to become the better version of herself for Aidu, and she knew that she wasn't, but she would try her best to be that. Aidu saw his surroundings light up and complimented that it was so beautiful, so what was that? Yoshi replied that those were known as the Christmas lights. Aidu asked what they should do at that time and if they should go for a walk. She declined and said that she wanted to stay as she was for a while, and she really wanted to kiss him. Aidu said that lately, he somehow understood what that feels like to want to kiss someone. 
and then they kissed each other. Aidu, Yoshi, and Nuki arrive at a restaurant, where Nuki appears nervous. Aidu wonders how he got into that mess. The scene takes place a few hours ago at Aidu's share house. Inari, being a fox, heads downstairs and notices that Aidu is telling the gang about learning that kisses are a form of telepathy used by humans to express emotions they can't put into words. Inari asks Aidu if he has ever kissed someone, to which Aidu responds that he kissed Yoshi. One member gets excited to hear that, while another mentions that they never knew humans had such a power. The first one, intrigued, decides to kiss Aidu, saying that, as Aidu mentioned, they just have to line up their mouths and give it a try. After kissing Aidu, he asks if Aidu knows what the boy was thinking. Aidu, visibly angered, declares that he will go and change his bandage. His outburst startles Hit, who admires how expressive Aidu is, realizing he could sense Aidu's anger. Another member agrees, noting that they sensed Aidu's frustration as well. Inari contemplates that the furthest they had gone before was holding hands. Yoki, viewing humans as mere playthings, questions whether Aidu has truly fallen in love with Yoshi. Curious, he approaches a child and inquires why everyone is in human form. The child explains that Yoshi is coming, prompting realization. Inari dismisses the idea of Aidu falling in love with a fox as ridiculous, but then, a funny idea crosses Inari's mind. Later, Inari transforms into Aidu's form and goes to meet Yoshi. She asks if Inari came to pick her up, and Inari responds, explaining that things got hectic at home, proposing a date. Yoshi happily agrees, stating that there's no problem. Inari gently lifted her hand, guiding Yoshi to grasp it. She couldn't help but wonder about the situation. Inari then suggested they go, and as they walked, he pondered how Yoshi's intuition hinted that something was off. However, she lacked the ability to see through his illusion, and ultimately, she was human. On that day, they aimed to have a wonderful date. Simultaneously, Aidu was at home, growing concerned about Yoshi being late. A small girl in the house began crying, expressing her boredom. Aidu remarked to Yuyuan that it seemed she had been looking forward to Yoshi's arrival as well. He suggested they go pick her up together, reminding Yuyuan to maintain a human appearance when they go outside, a proposal to which Yuyuan agreed. Meanwhile, Inari, still under the guise of Aidu, complimented Yoshi, noting that she looked cute. Skeptical, she asked if he was being genuine, and Inari reassured her, mentioning that all the outfits she had tried on looked great. Yoshi expressed surprise, noting that it was rare for him to say such things. Inari responded that lately, he had begun to understand what was so beautiful about Yoshi. Intrigued, Yoshi questioned why he was trying to act like Inari and insisted that he should remain as Aidu. Inari, curious, asked what was wrong with Inari's compliments. Yoshi, changing her dress, explained that it felt like 80% flattery. Besides, Inari seemed like the type who could lie with a straight face. Even though he asked her to teach him about humans, she felt he probably knew more than her. Nevertheless, he didn't seem like a bad guy. Inari inquired why she thought so, and Yoshi shared her trust in Inari. She mentioned how he always kept an eye out for Aidu and had helped her before when she tried to greet some of her classmates. Inari speculated that even if Inari was a liar, it might have been part of his plan. Yoshi approached Inari, expressing concern about Aidu's behavior. She wondered if he was doubting his friends and if he might be sick or something. After a while, Yoshi mentioned that she couldn't see through Aidu's bandage. Inari, feeling shy, asked if she wanted to buy all the clothes she had picked. She explained that she didn't have the money for all of them. Inari reassured her, saying it was no problem because he would buy them for her. Surprised, Yoshi asked if he had money. Inari placed a leaf on his palm, transforming it into money, leaving Yoshi astonished. They proceeded to buy all the chosen clothes, and the shop lady thanked them for their purchase. Once outside, Inari asked if it wasn't good to buy all those items. Yoshi, feeling uneasy, insisted she would go and return them, considering it felt like a scam. She explained to Inari that it was wrong, so he shouldn't do it again. Inari questioned why not, reasoning that the people at the store wouldn't know. Although she agreed, she still tried to dissuade him from such actions. Yoshi shared that her ex-boyfriend was a shoplifter, but not Aidu, emphasizing she didn't want him deceiving anyone. After giving him a lecture, she asked him to wait while she put the clothes back on the rack. Upon returning, she grabbed his hand and suggested they go, noting that it was about lunchtime. Inari asked Yoshi if she really cared about him, and she agreed. As they walked, they encountered Nuki, and together they headed to the restaurant. Yoshi offered some of her fries to Nuki, who thanked her and wondered if she was interrupting their date. Inari tried to address the concern, but Yoshi assured Nuki that there was nothing to worry about. Meanwhile, Aidu, accompanied by Yuyuan, was wondering where Yoshi was. Yuyuan doubted Aidu would find her there. Aidu quickly wrote a note and asked a small boy if Yoshi was around. 
The boy replied that she wasn't and accused her of breaking a promise. Aidu insisted it was too early to make such judgments and wondered where she could be. During their lunch, Yoshi casually suggested to Nuki that they should have a double date next time. Inari was intrigued, and Nuki blushed at the idea. Inari pondered whether Yoshi intentionally mentioned Inari's name during shopping and if she was trying to put Inari on the spot or testing him. Nuki denied any teasing, and Yoshi questioned why not, expressing that a double date would be enjoyable. Nuki asked Yoshi why she was teasing her, and Yoshi explained that she was genuinely happy for Nuki. To Yoshi, knowing that a girl like their friend was something to be joyful about, and there was no need to overthink it. Yoshi shifted the conversation to burgers, and Nuki agreed with her perspective. Yoshi suggested that the deal for a double date was sealed. After lunch, Yoshi came out, holding Aidu's hand, and remarked on the unexpected encounter with Nuki and the idea of a double date. Aidu asked if she wanted Inari to connect with Nuki, and Yoshi questioned if he was with her. Inari wondered if Yoshi knew what he was, advising her to mind her own business. And then Inari told Yoshi that he cast a spell on their classmates, one that made them think they had already known him for a long time. He believed Nuki was hardly affected by that spell. Yoshi asked him what he meant, and Inari responded that she was overthinking things. Yoshi, feeling frustrated, questioned the pointlessness of it, to which Yoshi argued that one wouldn't know until they tried. This made Yoshi angrier. Inari wondered why Yoshi was reacting this way, and if she saw him as a hindrance. Yoshi assured him that he wasn't the type to say such things and questioned what was wrong with him. Inari, irritated, caused some fog to appear, revealing his true form. Yoshi was shocked to see him and, suddenly, he kissed her. Embarrassed, Inari wondered why he had kissed her and quickly stated that he wasn't going to stay. He disappeared from the scene, leaving Yoshi bewildered. She pondered what had just happened and why Inari had kissed her. Thoughts raced through her mind, questioning if she had stood up Aidu and gone on a date with Inari. Even kissing him, was she cheating on Aidu? Despite Inari not disguising himself as Aidu, she hadn't noticed, and she wondered if a normal girlfriend would catch on to such details. The situation left her feeling exhausted and confused, wondering why Inari had put her through all of this. The next day at school, Yoshi approached Aidu to apologize for the events of the previous day. Aidu questioned if she was referring to the date with Inari, stating that he had heard everything. Yoshi was shocked to learn that Aidu already knew. Inari, who thought it best to inform Aidu, had shared the details and apologized to him, mentioning that he had searched for Yoshi as well. Yoshi was surprised that Inari had disclosed everything. Aidu brought up the trees and the drains, leaving Yoshi feeling like a lost pet. However, Aidu thanked her for apologizing and reassured her that it no longer bothered him. Just then, Nuki entered the classroom, and Yoshi still wondered about the situation with the date with Inari. Aidu asked if she wasn't mad, and Yoshi questioned if he wasn't upset about her kissing Inari. Aidu calmly stated that she kissed, leaving Yoshi puzzled. She turned to Inari and asked why he didn't inform Aidu about the kiss. Inari responded that he didn't think Aidu needed to know that much, realizing he hadn't intended for things to go that far. Aidu then admitted that he had also kissed someone else. Yoshi, angered, exclaimed that she didn't think he was the type to cheat and questioned if he was kidding her. Aidu asked if he shouldn't have done that, and Yoshi shook her head, asserting that he wasn't supposed to kiss or go on dates with anyone else if he had a girlfriend. Aidu acknowledged that they were even now, and he promised not to do that with anyone else, so she shouldn't either. Yoshi apologized to him, feeling a sense of being snapped back to reality. She pondered on her past relationships where her ex-boyfriends would get mad at her, but Aidu hadn't shown anger. While she acknowledged that Aidu didn't seem like the type to get mad, she wondered if he really felt anything and if he was growing tired of her. Feeling conflicted, Yoshi left Aidu and sat at her desk, contemplating that she didn't want either of those options. Inari observed Aidu, acknowledging that it was difficult to discern his thoughts. However, it seemed that Inari had managed to stir up their relationship somehow, and Yoshi could see how serious she was about Aidu. Nuki considered cancelling her date plans. Suddenly, Aidu slammed the bench in apparent anger. Yoshi, concerned, asked him what was wrong. Aidu, instead of speaking, wrote something down. When the teacher inquired if everything was all right, Aidu wrote a response, and suddenly, smoke emerged, turning his desk into dust. Aidu claimed it made him feel better. Others in the class wondered if his desk had exploded, finding the situation scary and suggesting everyone should calm down. Inari came over and kicked Aidu, causing him to fall. Aidu expressed that his body felt heavy and he couldn't move. Inari appeared angry, and when Yoshi called out to him, he instructed them to just get out. He then threw both Yoshi and Aidu out of the class. Aidu wondered why Inari was so mad, while Yoshi questioned what was wrong. Outside, Yoshi confronted Aidu, 
who explained that he felt weird and experienced mixed emotions when he imagined Yoshi and Inari on a date, kissing. Yoshi acknowledged that Aidu was mad, and he questioned the reason. Did Yoshi know something? She replied that it wasn't because he was jealous or something else. Confused, Aidu asked why he would be jealous, and Yoshi explained that it was because he loved her and wouldn't want anyone to take her away from him. Aidu noticed a difference in Yoshi's voice and questioned what had happened. Yoshi, irritated, told him to shut up and questioned why she had to be the one to explain her feelings. In an attempt to make things clear, she kissed him and asked if he had ever done that with anyone else. Aidu replied for her to get that too. Yoshi reiterated that she didn't kiss Inari or go on a date with him willingly, she was tricked, and she apologized. Aidu asked for the reason behind Inari's actions. Yoshi explained that normally, he would notice if someone was disguised as someone else but Aidu argued that humans wouldn't normally notice. Yoshi then questioned if he was tired of her or anything else, expressing her concern, even though she couldn't tell them apart. Aidu reassured her, saying he wasn't tired of her at all. Emotional, Yoshi hugged him, and Aidu added that he didn't kiss Inari because he wanted to, it wasn't intentional. The teacher interrupted, asking them what they were doing as they were in the middle of their lessons. All the students were staring at Yoshi and Aidu, wondering what was going on, especially since Aidu's desk had turned into dust. Someone suggested they should leave the classroom too. Inari noticed Nuki and apologized to her, thinking that he would use a bit of a lower level spell on her next time. He noticed her red eyes and wondered why they were that color. After school, Yoshi approached Nuki and asked about their date plans. Confused and worried, Nuki questioned what Yoshi was talking about. Aidu asked Inari about his desk, and Inari revealed that he erased all memories of that incident from everyone. He also reset Nuki's memories about him, redoing the spell so she wouldn't feel anything for him anymore, ensuring Yoshi didn't have to worry about it. Yoshi questioned if that was really the case, and Aidu stated that if Nuki fell in love with Inari again, it wouldn't be the spell's fault. Yoshi agreed, and Inari tried to deny it. Meanwhile, Nuki sat to the side, deep in thought about something. All the yakai in the share house were having a meal like animals, and they seemed quite peculiar. The landlord then angrily called out to Aidu. Aidu went over and asked, what's the matter? The landlord mentioned that he heard Aidu had used a spell in front of students in class. Aidu admitted to it and explained that he had pulverized the desk. The landlord declared that he was confiscating Aidu's pen and paper. The next day, Aidu was on the roof with Yoshi who asked if he wanted pen and paper for taking notes. Aidu replied that without them, he wouldn't be able to perform any magic. The landlord became pretty angry since humans were afraid of such powers. Yoshi pointed out that without the ability to use magic, Aidu was no different from a human, except he didn't have a face. Aidu pondered this and remarked that just knowing he was a yakai used to be enough to scare people. Yoshi mentioned that Aidu had a friend before. Aidu explained that since he was interested in humans, but now that they were scared of yakai, he wrapped his face with bandages, pretending to be a human. He would claim that his face was injured, encouraging others to befriend him. Yoshi commented that it seemed like they were nice people. Aidu continued, saying that when he revealed his real identity as a yakai, his friends became scared, and he never saw them again. Despite his attempts to apologize or bring gifts when he visited them, nothing worked, and he ended up feeling frustrated and in tears. A man pleaded with Aidu to stop coming, wondering what he had done to deserve such treatment. Aidu shared with Yoshi that he last saw his friend at their funeral, feeling a deep sense of loneliness knowing he wouldn't be able to meet them again. Yoshi, getting emotional, reassured Aidu not to worry and suggested that perhaps his friend wasn't a good person. Aidu replied that, considering the friendship his friend had shown him before discovering his true identity, he always regretted revealing himself. He expressed that it couldn't be helped, as it was normal for humans to fear yakai in the first place. So, in essence, his friends weren't truly bad. Yoshi then thought of something and asked, couldn't that be helped? It's certainly easier to think that way. If I give up, bad things will just happen again. She shared her experience of dating some nasty guys who called her an idiot over minor things, and even though she didn't do anything, people were afraid of her. She shrugged, saying that couldn't be helped, and she didn't care. Then she asked, what about us? Aidu asked, what do you mean? She replied, if I get scared and reject you like your old friend, would you still say that couldn't be helped? Aidu responded that he would, expressing his eagerness to keep learning from Yoshi, and how sad he would be if that happened. Yoshi blushed, getting visibly flustered, and Aidu asked her if she was angry with him. She grabbed his collar, saying that he was getting on her nerves, and he quickly apologized for that. Yoshi said that she was angry with him for selfishly resigning himself like that. She questioned if that was all she meant to him. 
she clarified that unlike his old friend, she cared a lot about him because she wanted to be with him. Did he understand what she was trying to say? Aidu agreed, acknowledging that as a yakai, she didn't run away from him. She asked if he would really be fine if she ran away just because he was a yakai. He denied it, and with tears in her eyes, she expressed her relief, stating that she was glad. Aidu asked if she was crying, noticing the happy colors with her. She explained that those were happy tears and she now felt relieved. Aidu commented that it must be nice, wishing he could express his feelings like that. Yoshi responded that actions speak louder than words. She hugged him, and he told her not to go away from him, to which she agreed. Kissing him, she mentioned that she wanted to flirt with him a bit more. Aidu questioned what flirting was, and Yoshi froze upon hearing that. He asked her what he should do, urging her to teach him. Just then, Inari arrived and saw them. Aidu asked if that was flirting, and Yoshi confirmed it. Inari inquired about what they were doing, advising that fighting wasn't good for them. And then the three of them left the school together. Yoshi asked Inari why he didn't need to use paper when he used magic. Inari replied that he had practiced a lot, and among them, there were those like him who were cultivated, and those like Aidu who were born from memories. Yoshi questioned what memories meant. Inari explained that humans' thoughts and fantasies created yakai like Kasakazu, a forgotten umbrella, and Zashiki, an abandoned child. They were born from the collective thoughts and fantasies of humans, making humans the ones who brought yakai to life. Yoshi remarked that it was a very sad life, and Inari responded that it was easy to accumulate thoughts in those circumstances. Yoshi then asked Aidu what he originally was. Aidu replied that he didn't know what he originally was and speculated that he might have been born from just a lump of meat. Yoshi commented that Aidu was only scary at first glance, and once you got used to it, he wasn't a big deal. Aidu expressed relief at hearing that, and they all held hands. Inari suggested to Yoshi that she should hold hands with him as well. Aidu denied, and Inari clarified that he wasn't asking for that. Yoshi was with Nuki at the share house, and Nuki mentioned that Yoshi saw an ad about taking anything first, and that part was going to be on the test. Yoshi, while eating candy, commented that it was all messed up and they would have to make up classes during summer break if they failed. Nuki agreed, acknowledging the truth of Yoshi's statement. Other yakai who were present wondered what those two were doing, as it seemed like they were having a study lesson. Nuki pondered what Yoshi said, considering they weren't really that close. Aidu chimed in, saying that studying was fun, to which Yoshi complimented him, expressing that she was very impressed. Inari joined from the tea and apologized for not serving it sooner. He assured them that they weren't planning anything weird and questioned if they brought Nuki there. Nuki was surprised to see Inari and then Inari sat next to her. Feeling shy, Nuki wondered what she should do, realizing that she had never sat next to a boy before. And then Nuki distanced herself, prompting Yoshi to inquire about the reason. Nuki replied that the floor was enough for someone at the bottom like her. Inari asked if her legs would hurt and suggested she come sit with them. Nuki thought that Inari was kind and agreed to join them. Just then, Yuyuan arrived, and Aidu asked her what happened. Yuyuan indicated a book and asked if it was for humans to study. Aidu confirmed, questioning if Yuyuan was interested in that. The small boy pulled Yoshi's hair and urged her to finish up and play. Yoshi lifted him, agreeing to play, and tossed him in the air, making the boy scared. Yoshi playfully said some tickle words. Aidu joined in and did the same, saying tickle as well. Yoshi denied it, asserting that it wasn't ticklish. Nuki informed Inari that she would be leaving soon, and Inari offered to send her home. They were all having fun, but then the leg of the small kid accidentally struck Yuyuan's head. The child promptly apologized, and Yuyuan assured him it was fine, adjusting her hairband. Yoshi noticed the headband and questioned if the cat ears were real, suggesting that Yuyuan might be human. Just then, someone called to Yuyuan, addressing him as dad, and clarifying that Yoshi was questioning if Yuyuan was human. The small one confirmed that Yoshi was correct, and the man stared at them. Yoshi wondered about the man's reaction, and he suggested they talk in the shed as he had something to give them. Once there, he shared a story from before he opened the share house. He mentioned working at an amusement park where the landlord cat was in his costume. The landlord took off his head cover, commenting that it was very hot, and questioned why a cat had to wear a cat costume. Suddenly shocked that a human had seen him there, the cat rushed to Yuyuan and asked if she was the lost one and where her parents were. Yuyuan replied that her parents had left. The cat was shocked to hear this and asked what humans did in such cases, questioning if her parents were going to come back and insisting they shouldn't leave that place. He suggested staying there until her parents returned. As evening approached, the cat was still in costume and asked Yuyuan if her parents still weren't there, mentioning that it was already night, and the park would be closing soon. 
He then offered Yu Yuan a balloon, asking if she wanted to come with him to his house. They went to the cat's house, and he welcomed her, mentioning that it was just a shed. Recognizing that Yu Yuan might be hungry, he explained that humans often threw away food that wasn't spoiled, so they wouldn't have any trouble with food. The balloon suddenly burst, startling Yu Yuan, and she got scared, apologizing to the cat and asking him not to hit her. The cat reassured her, asking why she was worried and promising to get her another balloon. After a while, he asked if Yu Yuan liked fried chicken, and she agreed. A week had passed, and every night, Yu Yuan cried for her mother. The cat thought about taking away the memories of her parents, planning to return them when her parents came back. He took her to the amusement park, where she enjoyed a ride, calling the cat her dad and waving. The cat reciprocated the gesture. Onlookers assumed the teddy bear there was the child's father. The cat felt that Yu Yuan had cheered up once he took those memories, believing it might be best for her. Realizing that if Yu Yuan asked about her parents, it would be troublesome, the cat decided to make her his child, planning to return all her memories when her parents returned. One day, Yu Yuan approached her dad with a message. Her birthday was the next day, and she asked if they could have a party. The cat agreed, reflecting that being a dad wasn't so bad after all. The cat became angry and asked if there was something to celebrate, causing Yu Yuan to start crying. He quickly reassured her that he was just joking. The cat pondered the changes humans undergo as they age, wondering if her parents would be able to find her then. He considered stopping her time, thinking it would be alright to return it once her parents came back. However, her parents never returned even after the amusement park closed a few years later and she was abandoned. The cat explained that this happened with cats too, if kittens had weak bodies, they would be abandoned, and humans picked up cats. He decided to keep taking care of her. Yu Yuan mentioned that their home was all gone and the cat told her he didn't need to return her memories or time. He believed there was no need to make her suffer needlessly. After that, he decided to open the share house for Yakai, so Yu Yuan could spend her life in peace without being lonely. Aidu commented that it seemed good for Yu Yuan, but Yoshi disagreed. She argued that taking away something like her memories and time from a child who couldn't decide anything on her own yet, and making her call him dad, wasn't satisfactory on its own. The man questioned what the problem was with Yakai to him and Inari, wondering if they were too selfish because they could use spells. Aidu and Yang defended themselves, stating that Yu Yuan's well-being was their priority. Yoshi, however, shouted at Aidu to shut up for a while. The man agreed, stating that spending more time with Yu Yuan made him believe that she would be fine as she was. He acknowledged that he couldn't decide Yu Yuan's happiness on his own, despite feeling like he was the most suited to make her happy. He then took out something and handed it to her, saying it was a Tamate Bako, a box that trapped her memories and time. Yoshi was surprised, asking if it was the Tamate Bako from the story of Urashima Taro. The man confirmed it and told Yu Yuan to open it. As she did, a lot of smoke appeared, revealing Yu Yuan in her young age. Yoshi pointed out that Yu Yuan did not look old. The man explained that he had held on to her memories for 15 years, making her around 21. Yoshi was shocked to hear about the 15-year gap. The man mentioned that Yu Yuan was reminiscent of her parents and wondered if she wanted to meet them. He asked if she desired to leave and live as a human, and if she would hate him because she wasn't a kid anymore. As Yu Yuan recalled the day she got the ticket from her parents, she remembered seeing them leaving from the gate. Tearfully, she explained that she was abandoned by her mother. The man asked if she wanted to meet her parents, promising to look for them. He also inquired if she wished to live as a human, offering assistance if she wanted to leave. Yu Yuan thought that he shouldn't have said those things if he was going to cry about them. She expressed that if it were up to her, she would never throw away such a cute kid like that. Yu Yuan expressed that she didn't need anything else and hugged the man, stating that she was happy to find a dad on that day. She conveyed her contentment and mentioned that she didn't need anything more. The man became emotional and apologized to her. Aidu and Yoshi were heading upstairs, and Aidu mentioned that it was good for Yu Yuan. Yoshi pondered whether it truly was good, realizing that Yu Yuan was indeed abandoned, but as long as she was happy, it might be fine. However, something was bothering Yoshi. She recalled that 16 years had passed for Yu Yuan, and if she was currently 21, the incident must have happened when she was only 6 years old. Yoshi considered the fact that Yu Yuan skipped elementary school, middle school, and high school, all due to becoming an adult instantly. Yoshi wouldn't want that for herself. Aidu called her and asked if something was bothering her. Yoshi denied it and suggested not to worry about it, then asked what Aidu wanted to show her. Aidu opened a room with a window, revealing the outside scenery. Yoshi was happy to see the blue sky and asked if he had stopped doing the sunset. Aidu agreed and mentioned that the sunset was a memory he had with his friends, while the blue sky was a scenery he often saw with her. 
Yoshi realized they were on the school roof and thought that Aidu treasured things like these too. She hugged him, thanking him. Aidu thought she was emitting happy vibes and considered if he could stop Yoshi's time, like the landlord did with Yuyuan. He pondered the idea of being able to stay with Yoshi forever, akin to the window scenery. Yoshi asked what he meant, and Aidu replied that it was nothing. The scene is set on the day of the test result announcement, where Yoshi shows her results, revealing that she didn't fail in any subject. A remarkable achievement. Inari mentioned that they had study sessions, and Nuki expressed that it was beneficial for Yoshi. Everyone rejoiced at the positive outcome. Aidu reflected on how, lately, when he saw Yoshi interacting with others, he noticed her exuding various happy colors more frequently. Since their first meeting, the vibrant hues of Yoshi's moods had steadily increased, a clear sign of her happiness. Approaching him, she shared that she didn't have to attend extra classes in the summer. She suggested spending the rest of the summer having lots of fun and mentioned a festival they could attend. Aidu mentioned that he received a failing grade in English, which surprised her. When she inquired about the reason, he responded that attending summer lessons would be fun, but it was definitely not going to be enjoyable. The scene transitions to the festival day, where Toshi prepares herself meticulously. Three boys approach her teasingly, questioning why she didn't join them to explore the stalls. Toshi finds it bothersome and informs them that she's waiting for her boyfriend. Just then, Aidu arrives and explains that she didn't go with them because they had already planned to check out the stalls together. One of the boys asks Aidu why he's hiding his face and if it's because he's scared. Aidu playfully reveals that he doesn't have a face, startling them and causing them to hastily retreat. Yoshi expresses her gratitude to Aidu for handling the situation. Inari joins them, commenting that Aidu is revealing his real identity as carefree as ever. He compliments Yoshi on her appearance and engages in a brief conversation with her. Nuki then arrives, thinking that Inari looks cool, and she's glad that she decided to come. And then, Yoshi and Nuki exchange compliments, acknowledging that they both look pretty. They proceed to walk around, exploring the various stalls and playing games. Nuki suddenly finds herself staring at Inari, prompting him to ask if something is wrong. She turns away, explaining that it's not what he thinks and apologizes. Inari reassures her that there's nothing for which she needs to apologize, finding her behavior somewhat peculiar. As they navigate through the bustling crowd, Aidu notices a father lifting his child onto his shoulders. Excitedly, he suggests Yoshi take a look. Without much warning, Aidu lifts her onto his shoulders, leaving her feeling embarrassed. Aidu begins walking ahead, and Nuki realizes they are getting separated. Inari steps in, holding her hand, and advises her not to stray from the group. Despite her initial surprise, she lets out a scream. After a while, they all manage to reunite. To calm down, Nuki suggests buying some snacks. Yoshi then asks Aidu to help her, and he agrees. They both head off to get snacks. Suddenly, Inari asks Yoshi if she remembers the time when he kissed her. Surprised, she questions why he's bringing up such a topic out of the blue. Inari responds that he realized it didn't seem to affect her, even though they were alone. Yoshi recalls that he previously mentioned he didn't mean to do it. Inari admits that it may not have been entirely true. Yoshi, remembering the incident, notes that she hasn't completely forgiven him for it. Inari queries why she invited him to the festival if she still harbors reservations. Yoshi explains that Aidu expressed a desire to go out and have some fun occasionally with Inari and maybe the others. Inari probes further, asking if Aidu specifically mentioned wanting to spend more time with him. Yoshi confirms that Aidu did express that sentiment and adds that she already promised Aidu she wouldn't kiss any other guy. Inari states that it wasn't intentional and he questions if she truly believes that. Inari contemplates whether Aidu was looking down on him. Just then, Nuki approaches Yoshi and questions whether she could truly be satisfied with a lover who showed no jealousy, devotion, or intention to keep her exclusively to himself. She asserts that if Inari were in Aidu's place, he wouldn't allow her to experience such feelings. Yoshi calmly responds that it's not happening. And as Inari knows, even if he were serious, her answer wouldn't change. Inari presses further, asking what's good about Aidu in the first place. Yoshi lists numerous positive qualities, stating that there are many good things about him. She believes it would be a waste for someone like Aidu to be with her. Despite Aidu leaving her alone with Inari, Yoshi emphasizes that he believed in her up until that moment and would continue to do so in the future. That's just how Aidu is. For Aidu's sake, she expresses her desire to become a worthy woman for him. Though she acknowledges she may still have a long way to go, she doesn't want him to be disgraced because of her. Inari reflects that, in different words, Yoshi and he trust each other, and it's surprisingly easy to jeopardize a relationship with magic. 
feeling rejected. He casually remarks that she's a boring woman, yet he won't cease his pranks. Inari acknowledges that no matter how hard he tries not to act like a mischievous Kitsune in front of Yoshi, that's just the nature of Kitsunes. Aidu and Nuki approach Yoshi, and they all watch the fireworks together. Yoshi suggests they move to get a better view, and they leave the area. Nuki notices Inari and asks if he's coming too. Inari informs her that he's heading back home. Nuki expresses surprise and mentions that she's also going back. Inari questions the reason for her decision, and she shyly suggests that she might be getting in the way of Yoshi and Aidu. Inari, confused, asks her what she's talking about. Nuki apologizes and asks for forgiveness. Shortly after, Yoshi and Aidu return, asking Inari where Nuki went. He informs them that she went back home. Yoshi expresses surprise upon hearing that Nuki left alone, and she asks if everything is okay. Inari replies that he didn't know what was going on himself. Aidu suggests going to check on Nuki. Inari reflects on his own cold words towards Nuki, realizing that she might have harbored affection for him. He acknowledges that he doesn't understand such emotions and that someone as easily hurt as her shouldn't involve herself with him. He jumps onto a tree, contemplating the difficulty of Yakai being accepted by humans. From his vantage point, Inari notices some boys forcing Nuki into their car. She pleads for them to stop, but one of the boys remarks that it would be a good consolation prize for their day's zero-point harvest. Nuki desperately calls for someone to help her. Angered, Inari transforms into his fox form, igniting the van's engine. The boys' clothes catch fire, and they cry out for water. Nuki's glasses fall in the commotion. The boys hastily flee, leaving Nuki searching for her glasses. Inari returns to Nuki, handing her glasses back. He mentions that he burned the boys' clothes, which should be enough to get them reported and arrested, ensuring Nuki's safety. As she turns around, she considers that it might be Inari who helped her. Inari reminds her not to turn, urging her to provide proof that it was impossible for her to love a monster. Nuki puts on her glasses and recognizes Inari's voice, confirming that it was indeed him. Yoshi and Aidu arrive, and Yoshi mentions hearing a loud sound. Aidu questions Inari, asking if he exposed himself in front of Nuki. Annoyed, Inari tells him to shut up. After explaining the situation, Nuki realizes that both Inari and Aidu are yakais. Aidu emphasizes the need to keep it a secret from everyone. Nuki seems confused, expressing that things are moving too fast for her to process. Inari reflects that although she may not have fully accepted him, she is likely overwhelmed and unable to think clearly. Aidu addresses Nuki, asking if she could hate Inari since she knows him. Nuki is shocked and questions why she would hate him. Aidu then inquires if she still likes Inari, to which she agrees. Yoshi observes Nuki's confusion, realizing that she may not have conveyed her thoughts clearly. Nuki swears to protect Inari's secret, even from an enemy like herself, expressing gratitude for Inari saving her. Nuki opens up to Aidu, sharing many thoughts and feelings. Inari reflects on wanting someone to notice him, revealing a time when he aspired to be a good Kitsune. When labeled as the Wolf Kitsune of Calamity, his only option seemed to be embracing the role of a bad Kitsune. Yoshi, however, discovered Aidu's true identity as a yakai, and was able to see beyond that to his real self. Inari admits feeling jealousy and shame for being influenced by such a childish motive. Yoshi responds by saying that it was fine the way it turned out. After the festival, Nuki mentions that she's heading home and will meet them later. Yoshi expresses concern about her going alone and suggests they all go with her. Nuki insists it's fine since her house is very close. Inari offers to accompany Nuki, and she feels hesitant but agrees. Yoshi informs Aidu that she's going to Nuki's home as well, and he agrees. Yoshi notices that Inari and Nuki are radiating happy colors, indicating they had a great time at the festival. Later, Yoshi decides to reward Aidu with a kiss, marking their first direct kiss. Aidu remarks that it feels different from when they kiss through the bandages. Yoshi suggests it could be considered their true first kiss. Aidu observes that Yoshi seems to be sparkling, indicating her happiness. She playfully tells him not to look at her so much. Aidu leans closer and asks to just let him look at her but not to show that face to others. Yoshi agrees with a smile. All the residents of the share house, including Yoshi and Nuki, head to the beach, and everyone appears to be in high spirits. Yuyuan asks how they got there, and Yoshi wonders if the heat is affecting her, explaining that they all took the bus together. Yuyuan realizes it was actually the share house's idea. She recalls a previous conversation where the landlord suggested turning the share house into an ocean and inviting Aidu's classmates. Aidu had denied the possibility, stating that he couldn't invite humans there. 
However, I do mention that they could deal with that on Christmas, prompting the landlord to inquire about Christmas and the conversation's topic. Suddenly, Yu Yuan expresses her desire to go to the ocean as well. The landlord, realizing the situation, agrees, stating that it couldn't be helped. Yoshi reflects on how the idea actually came to fruition. Aidu calls out to Yoshi, questioning if what they were wearing was typical beach attire. Yoshi playfully comments on his belly button piercing and touches his chest, remarking that his personality doesn't match his looks. He asks if it's bad that they don't match, but she denies it, saying she likes him as he is, appreciating the gap in his appearance. Aidu ponders something, and when Yoshi inquires about it, he insists it's nothing and that he likes her just the way she is. She expresses shock, assuming he means the girl's beachwear. Eventually, they all have a great time. Yoshi and Aidu find a spot with rocks in the ocean, and she asks if it's his first time seeing the ocean. Aidu reveals that he didn't venture far from his dwelling before. Yoshi sits on a rock and asks where he used to live. He replies that it was some sort of grave. As Yoshi turns her head to look down, she senses something behind her. To her surprise, there are mermaids sitting there, and one asks Aidu if she's the same human girl he's dating. Yoshi, thrilled to see mermaids, mentions that she saw them in anime and picture books. The mermaid confirms that she is indeed a real mermaid and invites Yoshi to join them. As Yoshi approaches, the mermaids grab her and take her into the ocean, leaving her visibly frightened. Aidu, in an attempt to chase them, enters the water. A girl questions Aidu's actions, and the others laugh. Aidu floats back to the ocean's edge and explains that Yoshi was captured by mermaids, but he couldn't swim. One of the mermaids assures Aidu that mermaids live to interact with humans and that they are likely curious about their relationship, suggesting that Yoshi will return. Aidu expresses his gratitude for their encouragement. Another boy brings up the legend of mermaid flesh, mentioning that it's said if you age the flesh of a mermaid, you could live around 1,000 years. The others ask if it's true. Aidu asks the mermaids if they are genuinely interested in mermaid flesh, jokingly questioning if their bottom half seems tasty and if their top half would taste like fish. He wonders if the mermaids would let him have a bite if he asked, and one replies that they would hit him. Yu Yuan then mentions that if she ate mermaid flesh, she could become a yakai and live with everyone forever, preventing her father from being lonely. Aidu inquires if something happened to the landlord, and Yu Yuan explains that ever since she matured, her dad has been worrying. On that particular day, he even had Kametachi and an umbrella act as her bodyguards, which seemed odd. One of the girls suggests it might be because they were hitting on her. Another boy proposes taking a mermaid's flesh, and Aidu agrees with Yu Yuan. Just then, they notice Yoshi approaching with the mermaids. Yoshi is crying, and Aidu rushes to hug her. Yoshi explains to the group that they were talking about love stories, specifically the lives between mermaids and humans, which often involve tragedies. She wishes everyone good luck as they embark on the nighttime test of courage. The rule is to make it through the forest in pairs, and they need to decide on their partners. Yoshi realizes that it's a test of courage for yakais. Aidu calls Yoshi, who questions why he's not helping. Aidu responds that they told him he could go with her. She asks if it's for real, and he admits he wants to see how scared she gets. Yoshi grabs his hand, and they venture into the forest. Nuki tries to say something, but Yu Yuan jumps on his back and asks if she can go with him. Nuki happily agrees. As Yoshi and Aidu enter the forest, Aidu asks if she's scared. Yoshi responds that it's pretty tame compared to the guys at the share house. Suddenly, they encounter giant monsters, Uski and Gashado. Aidu identifies them, and Yoshi tries to pull him away, urging him to leave. She mentions that she can't do this because he's too scary when he gets serious. Aidu reassures her that she'll be fine with him, but she argues that it's different because the monsters aren't trying to scare her. As they ponder this, a fast flame appears in circles around them. It turns out to be Inari, and Yoshi scolds him for making it impossible for them to move. Just as Yoshi opens her eyes, everything turns black, and she realizes she's alone. She calls out to Aidu, who can hear her but is unseen. Yoshi asks where he is, and Aidu replies that he's there. She explains that she can't see him. A white light emits behind Yoshi, and she discovers a girl there. Yoshi approaches and asks if she is Aidu. To her surprise, the faceless girl asks if she is not scared. Yoshi responds that it's not the first time she has seen a faceless person and questions if he intended to frighten her. Aidu agrees, mentioning that he enjoys testing the strength of her reactions. Yoshi grabs him from behind, expressing her embarrassment. 
Aidu moves away, and Yoshi questions what his normal appearance is. He explains that he borrows the form from a human and that his personality doesn't match with that appearance because it's not truly his. Yoshi inquires about his real form, and Aidu confesses that he's been changing his form throughout his life, forgetting what his initial form was. Unfortunately, he cannot turn back to his original self, and he apologizes to her. Yoshi asks Aidu why he's apologizing. He explains that he didn't mention it on purpose, and it seemed normal for him. However, when she expressed happiness with him as he was, he realized that she didn't know his true appearance. Yoshi laughs and reassures him that her feelings won't change based on his appearance. Aidu thanks her for understanding. Yoshi remarks that humans wither away as they live longer, and Aidu agrees, considering human growth and aging like a time limit leading to death. Aidu recalls Yuyuan's mention of the legend of mermaid flesh and her desire to become a yakai to live longer. This prompts Aidu to wonder if Yoshi would want to live with him forever. He calls her and directly asks if she wants to live with him. Yoshi is surprised by the sudden question and admits she hadn't thought he would ask at that time. Aidu comments on her happy aura and Yoshi says she needs time to think. Aidu thanks her for considering it and they leave the forest hand in hand. Outside, the others appreciate their bravery. They notice Yuyuan and Inari with Nuki, who fainted after being impressed by Inari's yakai form. Yoshi realizes that Nuki fainted before Inari could even react. After all that, a girl expressed her gratitude to Aidu for bringing them to the beach and mentioned that he also invited them to the Christmas party, which made them very happy. Aidu replied that he had fun hanging out with everyone too. The girl mentioned that she was thinking about how great it was when he transferred there. Aidu asked what she meant, and a second girl replied that before Aidu came to their class, it was tense because Yoshi's ex-boyfriend was controlling everything. The first girl added that he treated Yoshi like a possession, not giving her any space. Aidu wondered about this controlling behavior, and the girl explained that it meant someone treating their lover as a possession, not allowing them any freedom. Aidu agreed, saying that possessiveness was indeed bad. The girl assured him that Yoshi had Aidu and suggested they could ask him about what was behind his bandage. The second girl considered telling him that when she first saw him, she didn't want to associate with him. Just as Yoshi arrived, he abruptly grabbed her and declared that he would protect her. She shouted that he was seriously humiliating her. Despite this, she expressed her desire for summer vacation to last a bit longer, lamenting that their last high school summer was too short. Aidu asked about the high school summer and what would happen the next year. She explained that they were in their third year and would graduate the next year. Aidu was shocked to hear that three years had passed and inquired about life after graduation. Yoshi replied that some people go to college, while others start working. Aidu then asked what she planned to do, questioning if she aimed to become an adult. She clarified that it wasn't necessary but rather that they just naturally become adults, as it's an inevitable part of human life. Aidu pondered the idea of time's limits, realizing that Yoshi and the others were humans with limited time. And as a result, time seemed to pass quickly for them. Yoshi appeared happy, but Aidu couldn't shake a feeling of unsettlement. He then asked her about her plans for finding a job after graduating. She replied that she wanted to attend beautician school. He asked if she intended to go to school again after graduating, questioning the choice. She explained that she had changed, possibly matured, and that growth might require change. Aidu considered whether she changed or if it was a consequence of having to grow up. She, in turn, asked him about his plans and whether he knew anything about graduation. He admitted that he didn't know much about her yet and then asked if he could attend the same school as her. She questioned what he would do if he came, encouraging him to pursue what he wanted. He agreed, thinking that she felt far away. Yoshi envisioned living together while attending vocational school, wondering what it would be like to share a life with him. She felt excited about these possibilities. Aidu reflected on the bewildering changes in humans and how, over the 400 years, the world had gradually become so different. Yoshi, he realized, was also human, and she would change over time, and he might be left behind. He then called her and asked if she would come to the share house that day after school. She agreed, and he thanked her for that. Nuki was shocked to hear that Yoshi was going to live with Aidu. Yoshi mentioned that she thought she didn't know for sure yet. Nuki asked if it was fine if Aidu was a yakai. Yoshi questioned what she was implying, and Nuki replied that she didn't really know but wondered if there would be problems. Yoshi hugged her and said she should dive into those kinds of things, it would work itself out later. Nuki warned Yoshi to be careful, to which Yoshi replied that it would be fine and had worked out so far. Then she asked about Inari and Nuki's relationship. Nuki was shocked and said it was nothing. Yoshi asked if they weren't dating. Yoshi arrived at the share house and sat in Aidu's room. 
she thought that Nuki was a worrywart. Aidu told her to hold on as he had something to show her, then left the room. She thought that if it was her and Aidu, it would be fine and was grateful for Aidu. A boy asked Aidu where to find mermaid flesh, mentioning some forbidden items in the storehouse, thinking there might be mermaid flesh there too. Aidu found it and returned to Yoshi. She questioned what was in his hand, and he said he wanted to ask her if she would live together with him. Looking at him, she sensed his nervousness, so she hugged him and said she would. Aidu thought she agreed, then asked if she would eat the mermaid flesh for him. She wondered what he meant, and he explained that if they ate it, they would live for 1,000 years, allowing them to stay together even if she was human. She contemplated these ideas. Aidu added that she wouldn't grow any further, and it was fine if she didn't go to school. She thought and asked if he wanted to stop her from becoming an adult. He agreed and said that he didn't want her to become an adult. When she asked for the reason, he explained that he thought he could accept the fact that humans had a limited lifespan and endure the uneasiness of seeing her age. She realized that he had been contemplating this for a while. Then, she remembered his earring, realizing it was his only connection to a friend who grew and died. Yoshi understood that he wanted her to live with Yakai's because she would likely die first. Aidu shared that on that day, it felt like her heart was becoming distant, scaring him to see her like that. If that was what it meant for a human to become an adult, he didn't want that. Yoshi reflected that even though Aidu had been feeling anxious, she had been feeling happy on her own. Aidu wondered if he was forcing her too much, becoming possessive. He was about to say something when she interrupted, opening the sticker of the mermaid flesh. Suddenly, she found herself in a grassland, wondering where she was and asking Aidu where he was. Yoshi noticed a house in the grassland, and suddenly Yuyuan appeared. She explained that it was the real form of the share house, the barrier usually gave it a different appearance, and only those with permission could enter. Yoshi asked where Aidu was, and Yuyuan replied that her father sent Aidu back to the spirit world as punishment for breaking a taboo by taking out the mermaid's flesh. Yoshi explained that she hadn't eaten it yet, and Aidu was trying to stop her. Yuyuan apologized, mentioning that it was already late, and Aidu wouldn't come back for another 50 years. Yoshi was shocked to hear this and declared that there was no way she wanted that. Regardless of whether it was 50 or more years, she would wait for him. Yuyuan mentioned that Aidu should be happy, revealing a box and saying that if Yoshi intended to wait, she could use the Tame Bako. If she used it, time would stop for her, just as it had for Yuyuan. If Yoshi opened it, she would be able to meet Aidu with her current appearance. Yoshi agreed to use that, and she felt a heaviness, wondering if Aidu had felt the same. However, she realized that wasn't the case since Aidu was scared she would die before him, and her situation was different because she could wait. Yuyuan asked if she was sure, pointing out that she was different from Yuyuan, who was surrounded by yakais. If Yoshi didn't age, the people around her might find it strange. Yoshi asked if she could live with them in the share house, pondering if it actually sounded possible. She found the idea of living with yakai interesting, and since Yuyuan had been living with them, joining in shouldn't be a problem. It wasn't like she wouldn't be able to leave the share house, so there was no problem with that. She decided to do it, live a fun life while waiting for Aidu. Yuyuan thought that Yoshi was really going to do it, and Yoshi felt that it would be fine because she wasn't scared. Yoshi began to open the lid of the box, but Yuyuan stopped her and inquired about her parents and family, asking if it was fine to leave them behind. Yoshi responded that it would be fine because Aidu had saved her when she was suffering, and she wanted to be happy with him again in 50 years. Just then, Aidu appeared, tossing the box away. Yoshi asked him why he didn't go home, and, overcome with emotion, she hugged him, telling him not to scare her. Everyone else arrived, and Yuyuan apologized for lying. Yoshi asked for the reason behind their actions. The landlord explained that they were testing Yoshi's resolution. Humans were quite different from Yakai, and if Yoshi lived with them, the difference would eventually become a barrier. The barrier, in this case, was her lifespan. They dangled the mermaid's flesh in Hiroshima's box in front of her to make her experience it, encouraging her to think it over again. Yoshi asked if he meant that it was wrong for her to stop dating Aidu. The landlord denied it, saying it was up to Yoshi, however, once she made the decision, it wasn't something she could take back. If she did it half-heartedly, she would regret it later. Yoshi replied that she was fine and would live with Aidu. Aidu called her over and observed that even though she took the mermaid's flesh and Tame Bako, she seemed scared. Yoshi explained that it was because her feelings couldn't catch up yet. Aidu expressed concern, telling her that it wasn't good and she should treasure herself more. Yoshi responded that she would, mentioning that she only thought about her future plans because of him. Before, she didn't have anyone with expectations for her and she could treasure herself because he acknowledged her. Aidu said that's why she didn't have to sacrifice herself for him. 
Yoshi insisted that it wasn't really a sacrifice. Aidu placed his hands on her and mentioned that when she agreed to eat the mermaid's flesh for him, he felt happy. However, the moment he sensed her unease, when he saw the color of her discomfort, he wondered why he thought she wouldn't feel uneasy. Then he apologized to her for forcing her to make such a big decision. Yoshi asked him if he was crying, and he replied that he couldn't cry. He still didn't understand humans, and at that rate, if he stayed with her, her life would become distorted because of him. Even though she forgave him, he was scared of that. He then wrote something, indicating that he wanted to go back to the spirit world. He expressed that he couldn't be at her side. Thanking her, he disappeared from there, leaving Yoshi in tears. The scene shifts to two years later, and Yoshi finds herself in her room, reflecting on how Aidu never returned after that incident. The landlord apologized, explaining that when a yakai returned to the spirit world, he had to erase all memories of him from the human world. Yoshi asked if he was going to do the same with her. The landlord replied that it should be fine to leave one person's memories, but he questioned if she was sure. He thought it would be more painful for her if she remembered. Yoshi insisted that it was fine, so he shouldn't erase it. Yoshi, sitting in her room, thought that she didn't really regret the decision, but there had been a large hole in her heart since then. Despite graduating and starting vocational school, she wondered if Aidu was over her. While she had met others and enjoyed the past two years, nothing had filled the void left by that incident. She longed to see Aidu again and questioned if he felt the same. Looking out the window, she spotted Aidu and found herself falling from that floor. As she slipped, Aidu caught her and asked what she was doing. Yoshi retorted that it should be her line. Aidu apologized, mentioning that he wasn't going to see her again. She insisted he stop that and just come to her room. They sat in a corner, and Aidu explained that at that time, he was working as a tour guide for yakai visiting the human world. Originally, he wanted to work with yakai interested in humans. Yoshi held his tie and asked if he watched her during his breaks. He agreed, saying she seemed fine, so he would leave from there. She shook her head, telling him to leave those who look well because she was still very sad. Aidu remarked that the color of her seemed happy. Yoshi replied that it was because he was there. Aidu expressed that he was happy too. She hugged him, and Aidu mentioned that as he ran away from her, he thought she might do something scary. Yoshi admitted that she really wanted to do something. Aidu noted that her actions were contradictory. Yoshi argued that he was the one acting contradictory. He wanted to stay away from her but came to see her. Aidu agreed, saying that the further away he was from her, the more he wanted to see her. He expressed confusion about what was wrong with him, never having experienced such dissonance between his feelings and actions. He had never wavered because of someone else's feelings either. Yoshi then commented that it was because he loved her. Aidu pondered on that, and she affirmed that she loved him too. She reminded him that he had said he changed back then. Aidu acknowledged that he changed because he loved her, finding it amazing. Yoshi mentioned that's why he shouldn't feel uneasy. Aidu agreed, ensuring he would see and talk to her. He went on to touch and kiss her, ultimately sharing a passionate kiss. By hugging her, he expressed his desire to be with her, revealing that he had been thinking about it for the last two years since they had separated. She asked if he had been telling her all those things at that time, and he confessed that two years had never felt so long before. Yoshi acknowledged that it felt like a long time, suggesting that they carefully think about their future. Then, she welcomed him there. After considering everything, they decided to live together and Aidu started taking baths, changing clothes, and sleeping with her. One day, Aidu mentioned how happy he was to observe a human's private lifestyle. She thought he was very curious about that and jokingly suggested he could observe her as much as he wanted. However, they were going to live a passionate new life together, and she wondered if that wasn't something he wanted to do. Aidu suggested celebrating, but she clarified that she wanted to flirt instead. Aidu asked if that meant headbutting, and she agreed, saying it did happen. Playfully, she lay on him, and he teased her, saying he was joking. He asked if she wanted to touch his body, leading to more intimate moments between them. One day, they both met the people from the share house at the Christmas party. Yoshi mentioned that it had been a while since she had seen them all. Everyone was happy, and they had a wonderful party together. 